Good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Perfect. So welcome to the third Lisk Builders community meetup. It is a weekly community gathering where builders can share their projects, their ideas, uh, and also their challenges. We have one short presentation with a Q&A. And if you would like to pitch your project or look for help, look for other project members, let us know and we will give you some room to pitch. This is provided to you by the LISC community and uh, we would like to thank LISC Poland also for the graphics. The format is pretty easy. A quick opening like this, then a short presentation, Q&A and a thank you. Some rules. Let's not interrupt our speaker. Keep questions to the end. Uh, you can ask questions in the chat channel, but everybody also has the possibility to talk in Discord through a push to talk button. Uh, let's introduce Davi Alves. If I'm correct, he's from Brazil. He's working on a proof of concept uh, where a restaurant can use a LISC sidechain and uh, I'm curious what it is all about. So the next 25 minutes, he will talk you through the concept and maybe even show you some code. Thank you for being here. Take it away. Thank you so much for this introduction and great presentation. Yes, I'm from Brazil. My name is Davi. Some of you already know me uh, from the Lisk community. Others maybe are known me from today, but uh, I would like to show you what I'm working on, the idea of a Lustre restaurant using the Lisk sidechain. Okay. And uh, I would like to show you a very good way to build applications that can be consumed by a sidechain and uh, show the benefits of the blockchain, okay? Here's the agenda, okay? So, of course, we have some specific steps that I will show you during this presentation, okay? We can have introduction, a problem, motivation, objectives, the solution architecture, demonstration, use case, future work in conclusion, okay? A little bit about blockchain. Most of you already know uh, how we can use a blockchain, how we, it has the data structure. And uh, LISC is based on the delegate proof of stake consensus. It's moving to LISC BFT. Now we are talking about delegate proof of stake with 101 delegates, okay? And uh, currently, the block for the time on a side chain is actually 10 seconds. This is a default configuration, okay? And uh, when you try to build a side chain, have application that you consume in the side chain, you should really think about how to use in a really proper way, the time for the block, okay? I will show you some examples uh, during these presentations. Can you hear me now? Is it better now? I hope so. Okay, what's the problem? The problem discussed in this presentation is the difficulty to find a payment system supported anywhere in the globe to buy food. So think that uh, people, everybody wants to eat, right? And uh, for example, if you just travel to another country, maybe you should use a different coin to buy food. I'm here from here in Brazil. I use the Brazilian wheel, so 
If I travel to USA, I will have to use US dollar. If I have travel to Europe, I will have to use the specific euro or even the specific coin for that specific country. Okay. So also there are a few solutions that accept digital coin as payment in restaurants for different reasons. So why we have so much problem in this specific matter? Well, sometimes it's the lack of knowledge, not technology that would allow everybody to use the same coin. Sometimes it's difficult to access the technology because people really don't know about it. Um, sometimes it's because people think that it takes too much time to perform a transaction, difficulties of scalability, or even, and the most important, I believe, the instability of a token value. So imagine that uh, we have several tokens in the market, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Lisk, and many others. And uh, they are for trade too, right? So maybe for a side chain, a restaurant side chain, it would be good to have a specific token for food. Well, the motivation is based on the problem in the concept of having a payment solution for restaurant that allow anyone to request food anywhere in the globe or in a specific region. We're gonna talk a little bit about it using the same digital coin. The restaurant side chain solution will be discussed during this presentation and how it can be used by other restaurants, not only one restaurant consuming the same side chain. And how it's possible to scale it. Here are some objectives of this presentation. It's pretty like the same of the agenda, of course, that I will uh, be more specific on these matters. Okay. I will, in fact, demonstrate the solution, how it works how it can be consumed. I will talk a little bit about the architecture for the development environment, for example, and the user cases, different scenarios, different ways to think how you can use the restaurant side chain, or even I hope that many of you can have ideas about how to use side chain, maybe how to use a back end. I will show you some advantage to have a back-end uh, consuming the side chain in a web application or another type of client that will consume the back-end and the back-end consumes the side chain, okay? So each restaurant is a based back-end. So imagine that I have a side chain for restaurants and uh, I can specify Food types, price, the menu, but everything is going to be specified inside of the back end. So, if I want to have more than one restaurant consuming the restaurant side chain, I just need to create a new back end with a specific information for that specific restaurant. It can consume the same restaurant side chain. Each restaurant back end have has the list address or a wallet address for that specific study chain. So it's really important to understand this concept because all the rest of the presentation I will go through in the user case. In fact, uh, talking about the restaurants back in the restaurant user case and everything related to the specific wallet of that restaurant and how it consumes the side chain. Well, this is a representation of the solution architecture for the development environment that I have now. So imagine that I can have several users. The user can consume um, the website of the restaurant one or the website to restaurant two, okay? 
each web each website has its specific backend. Okay, so restaurant to one website you will consume the restaurant one backend. There you find the restaurant specific wallet, and uh, it will the backend will consume the side chain through a public node. The CDPR nodes uh, are in a specific network, private network, even different data centers. Okay. But I specified the communication between them using a private network. So uh, this way I can have some more security with it. Okay. Well, some things that I'm currently uh, showing the working on. So currently the side chain, the restaurant side chain, working 10 seconds for block for each time. I already performed some tests with five, five seconds and seven seconds. Okay, I have some results. It was possible to push the block to a specific height using five seconds or even seven seconds. And uh, it's really interesting to, to test these specific values because I can calculate the capacity of the storage side chain based on it. Okay, well, the restaurant side chain has uh, specific types of transaction. The food transaction is that specific transaction when a customer requests a food to the site, okay? And this transaction is performed by the back end to the restaurant side chain. The refund transaction is, for example, with the customer for any specific reason, just decide to cancel the request or he didn't like or the food didn't arrive in time or maybe uh, the delivery team that would deliver the food to the customer didn't, didn't arrive in time so the restaurant has a way to refund the customer using different type of transaction okay the refund transactions it's linked with the restaurant in fact okay, the restaurant wallet Basket transaction, why not? Well, till now the website allows any customer to click on a specific food uh, type and request the food, specifying its passphrase. And uh, this is equal to one transaction, right? So when we talk about scalability, when we talk about side chain, capacity, restaurant side chain capacity, maybe when I arrive at the user case, uh, you're going to understand why not have a unique transaction that allow the user go through the site and ask more than one item in there, include the, these items in a basket, and send all the items in a single transaction instead of just send each item in a specific transaction, okay? Delivery transaction. Um, it's very important to, to have the, the feedback from the user and uh, also to hazard the information that the food was delivered to the user. However, using delivery have some specific impacts in the restaurant side chain. Uh, I'm going to discuss it, it during the user case demonstration. Uh, and it, as we have some user case scenarios, it would be really, really interesting to discuss the specific delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's see. Yes, as I said before, the CDPR nodes are only internal networks. And regular nodes can be exposed to all other res registration, for example, using the LISC desktop application. I include a slide just to show uh, a development environment that I configured. So I can all uh, web request to, to the website using some specific port, the port 5000, 3000, 
are there for the websites one and two, so restaurant one and two. The back end, the back end, uh, I should not expose to everyone, but I just did in that specific moment just to show that's possible to do it. But uh, in fact, uh, I can expose it only to the website if some developers, for example. Okay. And uh, I specify specific private communication for the side chain nodes. Okay. In the regular nodes, the public node, I just specify uh, uh, a port that to allow any request. But it's for the dev development environment. Okay, let me go now to demonstration of the restaurant one. So people will now understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. So if I just jump now to the restaurant one website, I think everybody should be able to see it now. Well, it's a luxury restaurant, has a homepage, the information related to the food types here, the oyster entrance, cooked molds, vanilla ice cream, everything comes from the back end of the restaurant one. Okay. So I have here entrance, I have here menu options, I have here desserts. So let's say that I just want to request a rib on the barbecue. Okay. So there are some specific fields that are necessary to perform the request. So the name of the customer. So I include mine. Okay. The phone number. This is my phone number. Okay. So I include some Others, for example, building two and here in Salvador, here Brazil. I don't know if this food will be right there because I didn't find the number of the the building or apartment. So, okay. Uh, we'll just show here uh, the request that I performed. Anyone that wants to try to request a food, you can just copy the specific passphrase that I left here and use, okay? Don't worry about that, I have some. Until this moment, what happens that the website will request the backend to perform a food transaction to the restaurant side chain, okay? It should take some time now because I'm use I encrypt in the crypt functionality. So I'm using from the ESKHQ library. So it's take a little bit more time than I expected. Maybe I should try a different way later, but the request was performed. And the transaction, the full transaction is completed now. Okay. I can see here the transaction ID of the food request, uh, the price of the, the food, the address of the customer and the restaurant address, okay? Okay, good to see that uh, people are hungry now, also. Uh, and uh, at any time you can just Come here in search for your transaction. If you have to decrypt some information, okay, because there are some fields that are stored encrypted in into the sidechain blockchain, okay. For example, um, the address is stored encrypted, the phone number is stored encrypted, the name of the user is stored encrypted. Okay, for this proof of, of concept, I allow to search any transaction, but uh, this can be easily uh, developed for 
a user, a beta user experience, for example, only the user that requested that specific transaction should see uh, decrypted information of his request, for example. Okay. Now, of course, I have a refund option that allow the restaurant to refund that specific food. So I just need to get the transaction ID and uh, let me write it down here because uh, I need some information. Okay. So I just need to get the transaction ID and get the specific address of the restaurant. Get the address of the restaurant. Get the address of the customer. Sorry about that. Um, hold on a little bit because it takes some time to open here. Now, now I can get the transaction D. I can get the customer address. In the amount that should be refound. Okay. If I just go to refund, now I can specify the the transaction ID of the specific report. The amount is free. Um, the address of the customer that should be refound by the hashtag. Now, of course, this is a password for the restaurant owner because only he should be able to refund a customer, okay? And there are other validations that I could like not allow a refund that is above a specific value, for example, okay? So the refund was performed in two. And uh, the customer that didn't uh, want that specific food in the right requested, we receive back his money, for example. Okay. Uh, in the other menu here, you can find more about the history of this website, the menu options, or even information regarding me. I have some, my mail here, I have other information. That can, but I did that because I want you to understand uh, how the restaurant can interact with the side chain before I enter into the user case. Okay. Now I return to the presentation. Okay. I just show the Hester one to one. I didn't show Hester one to two. In fact, I can, in fact, show you two. The Hester one to two. Hold on. Try to change. My screen to the have to want to see that one. Now that you can see the restaurant too, everybody can see it or have any difficulty to see the restaurant. Let me know, please. Can you see the restaurant too, guys? is black let me try to okay if I can try to load it again
black screen. Oh my God. I think all the... Let me try to, to come back to the presentation. Oh, it says that the transmission is stopped. How can you stop the transmission? Let me start a new transmission, maybe with that. Hold on. It shows transmission stopped. Hmm, interesting. Hold on. No, it seems that every time they try to share the screen, it only shows black screen. I don't know why. Let me try the presentation. Maybe initiate a new one. Hold on. I try to initiate a new a new one.
I was too short to meet transmission stop it. Um, I don't know why. I was too need to discuss some of the case the, in the back end advantage. I was exactly in that specific moment, so. No way, yeah, it's really strange. Yeah, there is no game here. <laughs> Maybe uh, Raphael, as I already upload the, the, the presentation to you, maybe you, you can share the screen so I can talk about the, the, the presentation because for me, it's so until now, transmission stopped. It's really strange. Maybe I should unload Discord and load it again. Hold on. Maybe an option. Yeah. Yes, please, Drew. Share your screen so I can continue the presentation from your screen. Can you please go to the, to the next slide, Joe? Slide 11, yes. So I was exactly in that specific slide. I demonstrated the restaurant to one. I was demonstrating the restaurant to two. You, you can click on the restaurant to two side, please. The link of it. It will open uh, the browser with the restaurant to site so you have to just change your screen to the restaurant to site to the browser or maybe if you, it's really difficult for you to change the to the browser I can just move on with the presentation from you it's good I would like to show with that uh, the restaurant to site 
that is in the same link, but with the port 3000, um, it, will, it will open without any specific uh, food type there. And uh, that this is because all the information comes from the back end. Okay, so I would like to show that, but uh, you have to, if you want to show that, you have to change the screen to the browser. So it's like the option stop sharing and then change the screen and uh, it will change to the browser. For example. Anyway, so, yes, exactly. Yes, it's already open. No, yes, exactly. So now you can see the restaurant two site. As I was saying, there is no specific menu option there because the back end is stopped. I will just start the back end of the restaurant two. And now, if you please reload the page. You're going to see the information from the restaurant to, yes. Okay. So this way, it's possible to have really in a fast uh, development, several restaurants consuming the same side chain. This is a different restaurant, okay? So it has different price. If you click on the same ribs on the barbecue, plus vanilla ice cream dessert option, you're going to be able to you see that the the specific price of that uh, meal is different from the restaurant to one. Okay. Okay. If you please can go back to the slide presentation now, now that you understand more about the concepts of restaurant to one, restaurant two. Each restaurant has its own back end. It's really good that we can go back to the presentation. So please go back to the presentation, Jure. Okay, some backend advantages. While well, it's possible to include specific validations at the back end that should not be in the client. I mean, the client would be a web application or even a mobile application, or the specific validation would not be also in the transaction class. So you can add value to the business, to the restaurant business with specific validations in the back end. Beyond that, uh, a back end can receive connects from different clients. As I said, we can have clients like mobile and the web. So uh, during the use case, I will show some scenarios that is really interesting about that. As I said, it, it can aggregate business value. So for example, I can add as below cryptography for username, address, and phone. Um, we have a specific algorithm from restaurant one. For the restaurant two, I can have a different one. Okay, so this to um, bring some privacy to the user information that are being stored inside of a restaurant side chain. Okay, uh, please go to the next slide. So use case one, okay? So let's think about this uh, number now. I think it's, these, these are the, the, the very interesting moments for this specific illusory restaurant scenario, okay? So each restaurant, as I already see to show, has its own list address to the back end, okay? So let's think that each restaurant has, has its own list address, I mean, different franchises, owners, and uh, restaurant one has around 200 users during the, the lunch time and uh, also during dinner time. And you should think about that because, uh, of course, there are different moments in time that they will consume the restaurant side chain, they, that they will request food, that they will generate transactions into the restaurant side chain. Okay. The restaurant two is another franchisee with a different owner. Okay, and has 150 users on each meet time. So in this specific scenario, it can be consumed by the restaurant side chain 
without any problem, okay? We, if we think about technically about the transaction pool size, transaction pool capacity of a restaurant side chain, it's okay to receive 200, 300, 400 transactions uh, in that specific time. And uh, think about uh, how fast the transaction pool can be uh, cleaned or cleared or in the way that you want to use, in the word that you want to use. It's really okay to use more than one half torrent with the same half torrent side the chain, okay? And uh, let's say is that uh, each user in average requests a menu option. So it will be one transaction per user. In the side chain owner fee is about uh, 0.5 leash per transaction. So uh, thinking numbers, we can have in a single day 700 uh, requests, okay? And the side chain owner can receive uh, something around 350 lists if you just summarize the lunch, the dinner, okay? Also, uh, it's config configured that uh, the side chain delegate fee is about 0 0.1, okay? And uh, it's a very interesting use case. Okay, now let's go to the next slide, uh, Joe, please. The use case two. Let's say that now uh, the restaurant side chain decided to accept other restaurants from different places around the world, okay? And uh, in Brazil, now he has 350 users consuming that side chain. Then in USA, 200 users consuming that specific side chain, okay? And uh, in Europe, 400 users consume side chain. Thinking that uh, uh, the online business of this has to be side chain is growing, okay? And uh, people do not eat at the same time in this specific scenario because the time zone is different between Brazil, USA, and Europe, okay? But let's think about the worst case that everybody decides to request food at the same moment, okay? And each of the customers will request a menu option. Sure, there is not a very big deal if you just consider using the full transaction. But remember when I talk about the delivery transaction a uh, few slides uh, uh, earlier, uh, the thing is that uh, if I include for each food request a delivery transaction in the same data structure, in the same side chain, I will double the number of transactions that specific side chain. So maybe uh, would be good to have the delivery transaction in another data structure or in another side chain, or even use the side chain restaurant in a different. Uh, scenario, okay? Please you go now to the next use case. Okay. Now let's think that uh, some restaurants decide to accept the restaurant side chain token, including their business list address, but instead of having uh, all the restaurants in the world use the same side chain, let's say that uh, now the restaurant side chain uh, is used per region, not it's, it's not consumed by all the restaurants in the world. Let's say that in Brazil, in a specific neighborhood, in a specific area here, it decided to accept some restaurants. And these restaurants will accept the side chain token. Okay. So yes, it's possible to use the restaurant side chain this way too. The same in USA, the same in Europe, and each region would have its own restaurant side chain. And the restaurant side chain will have some restaurant to that specific area. It's another way that you can use the restaurant side chain. What's important here? Maybe if uh, uh, it's necessary to perform a conversion between those the, these tokens, a, a decentralized chain can intermediate this specific scenario, okay? 
But it's another way to think how you can use the restaurant side chain. Also, it's possible to use one restaurant to one restaurant side chain, but uh, it depends the way that the person wants to use it. Please do go now to the next user case. The user case four, it's one of my favorite user cases, uh, and I'll tell you why. So let's start to think now that uh, we, the restaurant side chain will not have in website okay it exists it have it, it has the back ends for each restaurant but uh, instead of having a, a online on online business he decided to use the restaurant side chain at the restaurant itself at the place so i like to go dinner for the restaurant much of you should have the same feeling and uh Let's say that in a restaurant, the number of payment machines something around around one to five uh, payment machines. It's really common to have this scenario. No, even big fast food like uh, I don't know McDonald's or other uh, fast foods. If you just think a little bit about the number of uh, payment machines there, maybe five, maybe even more, but uh, not as much like. 10, 11, 20 payment machines to be used at the same time, if you understand me. So let's say a common restaurant that has, I don't know, three payment machines, it means that only three tables or three and groups of users or users can pay at the same time, okay? So this is a very interesting scenario because now the restaurant side chain can expand its business around the world because it, it will be able to accept uh, restaurant side chain payment through, for example, a device like a mobile. So the mobile application, we can consume the restaurant backend. Okay, so at that specific restaurant, the, the, the restaurant owner has, for example, three devices, three mobile devices that will consume the restaurant back in the to consume the restaurant side chain and now the restaurant side chain can expand it to several restaurants through the world so using the same token so i don't know maybe 200 restaurants can be consumed by this restaurant side chain there is no need for delivery transaction because it's, it's a, a a business that occurs at the place so it's just like uh, request the food receive the food on your table Pay it using the uh, device, the restaurant application device, okay? And that's it. So uh, it's possible to include the restaurant side chain token also this way at the place. So I hope that uh, you all uh, could understand the scenario that I presented now, because if you have some question, I will arrive in a few moments. So do please go to the next slide. So the concluding future works is all about, well, maybe how may, uh, maybe a basket transaction can be applied to aggregate multiple requests from one user. So instead of uh, using a single request to request a, a meal from an online business, maybe I can uh, aggregate the request into a single uh, aggregate the item to a single request and perform a single transaction. Um, an administration page, page that could administrate all the restaurants and how they will be created and uh, all the business and uh, specific information there. And uh, why not think about using uh, a side chain? Why not having it on Uber Eats, iFood or something uh, related to the specific big uh, brands? Uh, with the restaurant side chain payment option. Uh, try to think the scenario that was presented in uh, how the capacity of the side chain can be used in a good way that can include the payment option just like uh, money or just like uh, debit or credit card, okay? And uh, of course, the, uh, having uh, the side chain token as a payment method on the restaurant side chain is a very good way to think how it can be consumed and have that specific token spread 
in different places, different regions in the world. So uh, there are some specific uh, blockchain characteristics that are really, really good for this kind of uh, scenario, like the possibility to use the token in multiple places in the world, the possibility to have privacy for the uh, customer information, even if the, the, the side chain is public, is exposed, but uh, uh, using crypt in, in the crypt functionality, each have to run back in. So uh, also, of, of course, the nodes bring for tolerance, the nodes bring uh, high availability for this scenario. So uh, it's, it's exactly what I was trying to, to show you guys today. And uh, yeah, you can go to the next slide. Uh, you. Uh, this is a little bit about me, okay. Um, I include some information for uh, my scientific article that was approved. It will be published soon. Uh, uh, and uh, on Monday I received from this ICBCT conference, conference all the papers that were approved there. So for me, it was a really, really good moment. So I would like to, uh, tell people that's really important and really good to submit papers to scientific uh, conference and uh, try to spread a little bit more about blockchain and even the benefits of it and uh, also the benefits of elastic blockchain. Okay, so now we can start question. I will try to go to the channel. If you have any question, please ask. If not, thank you too. Thank you so much for uh, the fellows that helped me during this this uh, specific proof of concept the, to create it. In fact, there are a lot of people. I would say Edward, Lemmy, Corbin, Chucky, uh, Rafael, Tony. A lot of people that I I was in contact uh, during the 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 development of this study chain and applications to understand more about this. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you so much. Thank um, you too. So uh, if I understand correctly, you have a full back-end system for restaurants, including a payment system? Yes, exactly, exactly that. So uh, the back-end, it's like in one restaurant. So thinking on an online business. So uh, this way, the restaurant side thinking accept multiple restaurants and can even expand it through different regions. Of course, that depends on the scenario, depends on the use case that should be uh, uh, used that specific side chain, but I try to show different ways to use a side chain uh, on a building like a restaurant, you know. Cool. Other questions? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, the, the contact details are encrypted using a password in the list HQ library. So it's turned into the side chain. Okay. And uh, each backend can have uh, its own encryption, decryption, password uh, at this moment. Okay. Even possible to change the method, but uh, this is the idea. So uh, the, the restaurant through the back end can um, search to be able to search their customer information and it's possible to search to the the restaurant address okay so this is the idea yes you're welcome 
Thank you too, Drew, for sharing your screen and showing me the presentation. <laughs> Any more questions or ideas? I have a lot of ideas. So if anyone wants wants a, a single idea, can I can help with that? Well, well I, I never stopped to think about that, the ideal delegates. Um, since the, the nodes are running in a private network, so it, it would be like you know, sharing uh, Amy, for example, on Amazon, and uh, allowing them to, to, to uh, have their delegates and nodes there. So the idea is always to use um, private network to allow a fast spread of the blocks uh, of the, the, the side chain. I don't know if you, if the restaurant would be the delegates there can be, but uh, I never stopped to think about that, in fact. So uh, I, I believe that uh, it's something that's possible to, to talk about. So everything started from a proof of concept, you know, so that's it. <laughs> okay, great. So thank you. If there are no more questions, then I will Wrap it up. Uh, so thank you for the presentation. Really, really cool. Cool idea, cool concept. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to when the proof of concept is, is live for everybody to uh, experiment with, <laughs> if that's uh, even happening. Yeah, I, I would just include here um this site so we can anyone can play with with them so it's possible to request transactions possible to social transaction there so if you want to create your own address just let me know i think the you can connect to the Lisk desktop through this uh, address if you want. And also you can verify the transactions uh, using the Explorer. So I just include here the link. So you can verify all the information that I showed during the presentation, the transaction that perform, the refund transaction. In fact, the explorers does not show any specific details. So uh, I think it's because of the transaction type from a uh, side chain, but uh, you can see at least the amount, the, the, the sender information, so you can verify. Okay, that's it. Perfect, thank you. And then the last thing to mention is uh, that next week we will have Corbin to speak about his global data chain, uh, also a proof of concept he's building with the LISC SDK. Uh, so thanks again and see you next week, everybody.